I've been using a Bowden style extruder on my 3D printer. This is the one I downloaded from Thingiverse. And while it has worked quite well for me for printing rigid filaments like PLA, PETG, ABS, etc., one of the downsides is printing soft elastic filaments, such as TPE. TPE, or thermoplastic elastomer, is a rubber-like filament which can stretch and compress almost like a spring. Just don't stretch it too much, otherwise it'll remember that stretch state. It's great for printing protective cases on phones and action cameras, or for vibration damping. The stretchy nature of TPE filament makes it quite a challenge for a Bowden drive to push this filament through a foot or more of Teflon tubing. In fact, it's not uncommon for the uh, TPE filament to get bound up and stuck around the drive gear. There's a couple of things we can do to increase our chances of success with printing with this flexible filament. The first thing is the length of the Teflon tube between the Bowden drive and your hot end. If it doesn't need to be as long as yours currently is, reduce that length. That should reduce the amount of friction that the filament is exposed to. And lastly, we can switch uh, the actual Bowden mount drive itself to one which doesn't expose as much of the filament between the drive gear and where it enters the Teflon tube, as that is a common source where the filament binds up and fails the print. And that's exactly what I've done. I've designed and printed a new Bowden drive. This particular one has plastic supports going right up to where the idler bearing is and where the drive gear will be, reducing the gap between the drive gear and where the filament is encapsulated within the Bowden mount, which should result in much better success with printing soft filaments. When designing this new Bowden mount, the main design goal was of course to reduce the amount of filament that is exposed between the idler bearing, the drive gear, and where the filament enters and exits the drive system. So here you can see that there is far less filament that will be uh, exposed and therefore a much lower chance of it binding up when it's difficult to push this filament through the hot end. To give the filament the best chance of success, the Teflon tube goes through the uh, push fit connector and actually into the plastic mount itself. If I unscrew this push fit connector, we'll just see how far in the Teflon tube makes it into this uh, Bowden drive. So you can tell the Teflon tube goes almost all the way to the end of the plastic. That's as far as I could take it without there not being enough plastic to support itself. Another design goal when creating this new Bowden drive is its ability to be symmetrical or ambidextrous. It doesn't matter if you install this on the right hand side of your printer or the left hand side of your printer. We have the same push fit connection on either side, which allows you to extrude the filament either direction from this mount. And to make installation easier with the push fit connector, I can get that to focus, you'll just be able to see the thread. That thread is actually part of the print. That is an, uh, an M10 thread, which matches the thread diameter of these standard push fit connectors. So in theory, they should, once lined up correctly, screw on rel relatively easily, making installation uh, easier. And plus, why limit yourself to only having uh, one side with Teflon tube? You can now enable both sides to have the Teflon tube installed. And I guess one reason why you would choose this particular example is, okay, one, one goes to the hot end, of course. The other end, your particular spool of plastic might not be right next to your printer. It might be further away. You can now guide the filament through the Teflon tube and ensure that it doesn't bind on either side. While I've designed this new Bowden system for the Hypercube 3D printer, it's actually compatible with any 3D printer. So even if you don't have a Hypercube, you can feel free to download uh, these three STL files. I'll place a link in the description below. But here are the fixings you're going to need to actually assemble and print this particular new system. Starting with the Bowden motor mount, you're going to need 
for fixing to 2020 uh, aluminium extrusion, two M5 by 10 millimeter screws and two uh, M5 hammer nuts or T nuts. The, all these parts, by the way, are the exact same parts that exist in the Hypercube set and you should have plenty of these spare. You shouldn't need to go out and buy anything. You're also going to need uh, M3 by 10 millimeter screws. So we're going to need two for the motor mount here. We're going to need one for the idler and also one for the Bowden knob. You're going to need two M3 by 20 millimeter screws. You're going to need two M3 hex nuts. One fits inside the motor mount. One fits at the base of the knob. And lastly, you're going to need a 623 uh, bearing for the idler. So these are the same flange bearings that we're currently using on the Hypercube. The flange bearings will work with this, otherwise if you don't have a flange, that's okay. The non-flanged version will also work. With the Bowden idler, the M3 by 10 millimeter screw actually screws in or threads into the plastic. You don't need a nut with this. The hole is slightly smaller than the M3 thread for the screw to grab onto and stay put. This ensures that the 623 bearing is uh, properly secured and locked in place. When using a flange bearing, ensure the flange is at the bottom of the idler. For the Bowden knob, an M3 by 10 millimeter screw and one M3 hex nut. That hex nut nestles into the space provided. And lastly, we have a M10 push fit connector. This particular connector allows the four millimeter outer diameter Teflon tube to pass right through, just to give you a demonstration. It's a one way push fit connector, so you can push through in this direction, but it's locked. You cannot pull it back in the other direction unless you push, uh, push down this uh, plastic ring along the top. So you need at least one of those, or you can get two of them to install one on either side. And lastly, for the actual drive gear itself, I'll be using this. This is a, a knurled drive gear. This has an outer dimension of eight millimeters. So the drive gear that you'll need will be an eight millimeter diameter for this new Bowden system. Here I've installed the top of the Bowden drive to the NEMA 17 stepper motor. And I also have that uh, knurled drive gear slid onto the shaft of the stepper motor. And you can just see how little gap that there is between that uh, knurled gear and the plastic mount itself. I'll just grab some filament and I'll just pass that through just so you can see how much filament is actually exposed. For the idler, that remaining M3 by 20 millimeter screw, which slots into uh, the front left corner of the motor, is actually the hinge as well for the idler. So that needs to slot in first before you can slide that screw on. That then acts as the hinge for the idler. And lastly, we have the bottom knob. So that's there to clamp the idler up against the filament and the knurled drive gear and screws on just like that. So when filament is inserted and passed through, when we're ready to clamp the idler up against the filament, we can see that the idler doesn't flush mount with the edge of the, uh, the motor here. That's where the Bowden knob comes in. We're not using a spring with this particular design to keep force or pressure up against the idler and the knurled drive gear. We're actually using the uh, flexibility inherent within the plastic. So using the knob, just turning that on, what you'll see is as I'm screwing that down, the actual idler, this part of the idler here, which is a lot thinner than the rest of the idler, will start to flex. And that provides the constant force or pressure up against the bearing toward the, uh, the filament and the knurl drive gear. Looking through the Bowden drive, you can see the access port for the filament to pass straight through, past the knurled gear and then out the other end. As I close the idler, that space will get obstructed by the idler bearing itself. So there you can see that we've lost about half of that gap that exists there. So that's the amount of compression, the maximum amount of compression that the idler bearing uh, can provide to the filament. 
All these pieces were printed at a 0.2mm layer height, with three perimeters, three top and bottom layers, and a 50% infill. The idler and the bottom knob are quite easy to print, and they'll be quite fast to print because they're quite small pieces. But for the actual motor mount itself, there are a few areas where there are overhangs, so you will need to use a, a part cooling fan to ensure that the overhangs print correctly. The first one's quite easy. This is just a 45 degree overhang here. It's only a small one. The ones that are challenging are beneath these two filament guides on either side of the uh, Bowden system. So these two filament guides, they, they branch out at a 68 degree angle. So if you're printing it like this on the platform, it's only a 68 degree angle. You will definitely need to use uh, a cooling fan to ensure that they come out nice and firm and that the plastic solidifies before it has a chance to droop or curl up on itself. I've had this spool of TPE filament provided from Ararum for quite a while now, but I haven't been able to print with this because my other extruder simply wasn't able uh, to push this through the Teflon tube without binding. So finally, the big test, is this new Bowden system worthy of printing this ultra-flexible TPE filament? And after an hour and a half of printing TPE filament at only 10 millimeters per second, this is the result. This is amazing. I love the texture and feel of this filament. It does feel like a, like a grippy rubber. And of course, ultra flexible. There was no chance that I was able to print with this filament with my uh, previous extruder. I tried, don't you worry. Uh, but this particular one, only printing at 210 degrees Celsius with only a 10% uh, extra multiplier on the extrusion. And no, this wasn't printed in vase mode. This was printed in a per layer mode. So if I just rotate this piece until we can find the seam, there it is there. You can see that's where the seam was changing layers. And oh, it moved over to there for the final top piece. I chose the Optical Illusion Vase to print out of Orarum's TPE filament because I'd already printed the same test piece using Polymaker's Polyflex, which is more of a TPU rather than a TPE, so that's quite easy. Anyone can print with that. But this black piece here is a NinjaFlex, so this would be the closest thing to Orarum's TPE that I've just printed. So this also is quite flexible, but unlike Orarum's TPE, using my old extruder, I wasn't able to get anywhere near as nice a finish using the NinjaFlex. Nothing to do with NinjaFlex, of course, it was just the settings I used at the time with my old extruder. This was the best that I could get. And as you can see, it's uh, full of under extrusion throughout this particular piece, which just goes to show how much better this new uh, Bowden extruder system can function with similar flexible TPE filaments. Okay, so we can print in very flexible TPE filament, but how does this new Bowden drive go with retractions? Well, here is a retraction test piece. Each of these columns is approximately uh, two millimeters in diameter. And with a 0.2 millimeter layer height, the printer was circling this piece for approximately 10 minutes, extruding and retracting uh, this PLA filament. And as you can see, there is uh, no stringing, no over extrusion, so no blobs, and no under extrusion, no gaps in the print either. So as this was going for 10 minutes solid, that's where I just stopped it at that point. The retraction settings I was using here was three millimeters of retraction 
with a 100 millimeter per second retraction speed. And as another test out of PLA plastic, this is the Knight chess piece available for download on Thingiverse from the chess set. So I've printed a king, queen, and I think a pawn previously. So this is the first knight that I've printed. This one here I've printed at a 0.12 millimeter layer height. This one took three hours to complete. And it's come up absolutely beautifully. Uh, I keep forgetting how well my printer can print sometimes, but I'm just glad that the new uh, Bowden uh, extruder can still perform uh, very well when printing with uh, everyday plastics like PLA plastic. The only issue I have with this print, which printing quite detailed like this does show, and you'll just notice just along here, there's a very faint bit of curling and just a tiny bit just there as well. So I haven't done any cleaning. This is, as you see, it is as it came off the, the printer. Uh, looks like I need to work on the cooling system. Not enough air was blowing over this part, so it was, it was printing like this. The, the air was coming from this direction, and it was just missing this uh, spiral column coming up to the, the head of the knight uh, chest piece. So that's something that I'll look at in the future. But yeah, very happy with the way this new extruder performs. And if you're thinking about making the Hypercube set, this particular Bowden knob can also be used in other areas of the printer. So the Z-axis end stop adjustment, you can now use the Bowden knob to adjust the Z-axis height. And also for the bed springs, you can use this Bowden knob underneath the bed to adjust the height of each corner. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or suggestions about this extruder or anything else about the video, please let me know down below. And a special thanks to everyone on Patreon. It's your support that makes videos like this possible.